Wendell Holmes Jr. was born on March 8, 1841, in Boston, Massachusetts. His father, the highly accomplished Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr., was a doctor, professor of medicine at Harvard, and a published novelist. Holmes went to a variety of private schools in his youth, and would come to study at Harvard like his father before him. Holmes Jr. was rather unimpressed with Harvard the first time he attended the school, graduating in 1861, and due to a series of altercations with the professor, Holmes almost didn't graduate, and thus left to go train for the army. He was convinced to return and finish his degree, graduating before his regiment went off to war. After graduation, Holmes rejoined his regiment, the 20th Massachusetts Infantry. This regiment would join the Army of the Potomac and serve with them throughout the course of the war. Holmes was named captain of his regiment at the age of 20. Captain Holmes was injured thrice during the war, although most notably at the Battle of Ball's Bluff, where he refused to leave the field, and then again at Antietam, where he was overly casual about being shot in the neck. To quote, Usual luck. Ball entered at the rear, passing through the central seam of coat and waistcoat collar, coming out towards the front on the left side. Yet I don't seem to have smashed my spine, or I suppose I should be dead or paralyzed or something. Holmes also reserves the title of the Union soldier who told President Lincoln to get down, you beep fool. After the 20th Massachusetts Infantry was discharged in 1865, Holmes returned to Harvard to study law. He would come to think favorably on his army days during this time. After graduating from Harvard Law, Holmes became a judge in his home state of Massachusetts, and learned about the bane of his existence, which would come to be lawyers. And then, in 1902, President Theodore Roosevelt nominated Holmes to the U.S. Supreme Court. During this period of time, he became known as the Great Dissenter for because he opposed so many of his fellow justices' opinions. In 1905, he wrote a dissenting opinion on Lochner v. New York. In 1919, he wrote about Schenck v. the United States. But however, his most famous dissenting opinion was in the case of Abrams versus the United States, which upheld the convictions of Russian-born political radicals during the Espionage Act. Holmes didn't think that the case met the clear and present danger part, and he wrote that the ultimate good desired is better reached by free trade and ideas, that the best 
test of truth is the power of the thought to get itself accepted in the competition of the market, and that truth is the only ground upon which their wishes safely can be carried out. Holmes removed himself from the Supreme Court in 1932, after just about 30 years of service. Holmes would die in 1935, two days short of his 94th birthday. And he is remembered as one of the most... Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. has so many of the qualities of a leader and has left a lasting legacy upon this country. He's a leader in that at the young age of 20, after having just entered the military and graduating from college, he was appointed as a captain to lead his men. He refused to leave the battlefield at Ball's Bluff, even though he had been shot in the abdomen. And he was just an overall wonderful speaker who could bring people to motion and action when he spoke. And then when he became a Supreme Court Justice, he showed exceptional leadership in that he refused to let his opinion, no matter how unpopular it may have been with his peers, go unspoken because he was so firm in his conviction. He once said a new untruth is better than an old truth, meaning that the times have changed and that some things, while not necessarily taken as true, could be better than the old things that we used to think This could be a reference to slavery or other things, but it can be said without a doubt that Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. will live the life touched with fire and has left a legacy.